Hello and welcome back to the Airborne Lawyer YouTube channel. Today you find me in Puerto Williams, one of the very last settlements you would reach before coming to the very end of South America. After a few weeks break over the summer, it's time to now resume the TBM 930 World Tour and discover yet more of South America, which has never failed to disappoint on the tour so far. Sadly, of course, it's only a virtual world tour. I'm on a voyage of discovery, courtesy entirely of Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. But the scenery is so spectacular, it certainly feels like I could be there for real. Do click on subscribe and make sure you check out the other episodes in the series, uh, which has taken me all the way from my hometown of Cambridge in the UK through Iceland, Canada, the US, Cuba, Jamaica, Venezuela, Brazil, Argentina, and now Chile. And in the last episode of the TVM 930 World Tour, I flew from Buenos Aires to the Falkland Islands, and then from the Falkland Islands over to Cape Horn. I landed at Puerto Williams, which was the first airfield I found, although this opening sequence right now shows the beautiful scenery of the Beagle Channel between Ushuaia, uh, which is just to the west of where we are now, and Puerto Williams. Ushuaia, uh, which is a few miles behind us, is a more significant settlement than Puerto Williams and it is, I gather, a key staging point for missions down to Antarctica. But none of the places in this part of the world can be described as being particularly large. It is incredibly remote. Most of the land down here in the Tierra del Fuego is undeveloped wilderness and for me that just adds to the unspoiled beauty and ruggedness of the experience of seeing all this virtually. Now that wilderness extends for hundreds of miles to the north of here and uh, out in both directions towards the Pacific and Atlantic coast. I found that out in fact in planning today's flight uh, when I realised there's very little here to fly to. Plenty to see and enjoy in terms of scenery but very few airports to land into. So in the end I've opted to fly first up to El Calafate which takes us back into Argentina. El Calafate is about 375 miles northwest of where we are now and is located just to the east of Argentina's Park Nacional Los Glaciares. We will fly northwest for about an hour, take in the glaciers, stop over in El Calafate, and then after that we're heading much further north to Santiago, the capital city of Chile. Okay, so quick look at the map before we head off, so you can picture where we are. Here we are at the bottom of South America at Puerto Williams. We're going to head northwest up to El Calafate. As I say, the uh, glaciers are just to the west of El Calafate, and then we have a long slog north up to Santiago. Okay, so let's get cracking. Uh, the plane is pretty much set up, got the engine on, got all the systems on, quick uh, last check through and uh, send on the taxi lights I think that's about it um, great, we can taxi out obviously this is a tiny little airfield so there is not a long taxi out uh, to the active it's literally right around the corner it's just here I have checked on VATSCOPE, there's nothing in the area which comes as no surprise, so we can turn on the strobes, turn on the landing lights and get underway. It's uh, certainly a better day than when I arrived here. Check out the last episode of the TBM 930 World Tour to see my landing into Puerto Williams. It was gusty. Uh, quite challenging on short final. This is much, much calmer. So throttling up without over torquing the engine looking for a rotate speed of 90 knots there it is and away we go absolutely fantastic performance 
on the TBM 930 every single time. It flies nearly as fast as a jet. You can get it up into the air in no time. You can land it on a postage stamp, frankly. It's so versatile. And that's why it's such a perfect aircraft to be doing this world tour in, because I can take it off and land it pretty much anywhere. that terrain map, a hell of a lot of red in there, obviously it's very mountainous around here as we can see out to our left. Little by little we're starting to see a few greens and yellows coming in as we get higher, but right now that red is screaming at us not to fly towards the terrain because we won't clear it at, the, at our current altitude. It's obviously all okay because we are climbing out over the Beagle Channel, which is what we were just taking the drone out over during the introductory section. Look at that sunlight glinting off the wing. That's perfect. This is real world weather, so this should be a fair representation of what the weather is actually like in this part of South America this morning. Uh, so I've just switched over to nav hold on the autopilot. What we're just going to do now is pick up our planned flight route, the pink line, on the navigation display. Once the plane's adjusting, let's get the drone out and take a few, uh, few shots outside. Already see Queto Williams disappearing into the distance there. Last look at, uh, well, the down towards Cape Horn. And here's the Beagle Channel. We're now heading back towards Ushuaia, which as I say was uh, just behind where we started that introductory section. I'm going to remember this this stop off on the TBM 930 World Tour uh, with great fondness. It's been really fun seeing this bit of the world. different to anything that I'm used to seeing. It almost feels slightly alien in a way. It feels a long way from anywhere. So the climate down here is pretty brutal in its own way. And you've just got this vast, unspoiled wilderness. You look down there, you can't see roads, you can't see settlements, let alone cities. And that seems to just stretch on for mile after mile. So again in this film we are going to be leaving Chile, we're going back into Argentina, initially El Calafate is in Argentina. And uh, visiting one of the Argentinian national parks. Uh, but we will be back in Chile by the end of the video. We will not be landing in the main international airport in Santiago. As usual with the TBM 930 World Tour, I'm looking to go to the sorts of airports which I wouldn't go in normal VATSIM airliner flying. Uh, I have located a small airbase. I think it might be a military airbase, that's why I say airbase, or, or, or otherwise maybe just a sort of a civilian municipal runway. Uh, actually closer to the downtown area of Santiago, so we will be touching down there all being well uh, at the end of this video. I do hope the weather stays like this because we will then get a cracking view of the glaciers uh, in El Calafate.
if you've watched other videos that I put up on the channel, you'll know that I time lapse the cruise, which I'll be doing in a little while. The plan here is to uh, time lapse the cruise up to our caliphate, which will just take a minute or two. So it's not actually that far. As I said during the introduction, it's about 375 odd miles. We've already covered about 10 of those. And we will take a decent look at the glaciers, then refuel in Al Calafate, and then again I will time lapse the cruise up to Santiago. Flight up to Santiago is substantially longer, it's going to be around about three and a half to four hours to get back up there. And that will then put us roughly on the same kind of latitude as Buenos Aires. So heading back into the the kind of middle area of South America. I suppose it's just to the south of the middle area, really, but we'll have at least recovered a lot of the ground in our journey north. So as we now climb up towards our cruise altitude, I will uh, time-lapse the flight from here and leave you to enjoy the cruise. As I say, it's not going to be particularly long. If you want to, you can just select uh, the chapter where we get to the glaciers. Uh, otherwise, I will speak to you in just a few moments' time once we're back in Argentinian airspace at the Parque Nacional de los Glaciares. <laughs> So welcome back to the flight. We've not been in the air too long, just over an hour, and we are now up near to El Calafate. If you look at that centre display screen there with the pink line on it, uh, the pink line represents our planned flight route. So that's just behind us. What we've actually done is just deviated from that route and are now heading well, pretty much west, uh, north, northwest kind of direction out towards uh, the national park where the glaciers are located. The good news is, as we can see, the weather has held. There are a few clouds, but nothing too concerning in front of us. We should be able to get some really decent views very, very shortly.
Otherwise, uh, it's been a pretty calm and uneventful flight, certainly an enjoyable one. We've got to see some beautiful scenery uh, in the Tierra del Fuego region as we've made the roughly 400 mile trip up from, uh, from Puerto Williams. Uh, so it's certainly been one of the enjoyable flights of the tour so far. Seeing a lot of snow on the mountains in front of us, which again is encouraging. I've never seen a glacier in real life and I'm quite aware that this is a virtual tour on Flight Sim 2020, so I'm not going to see a glacier today either. But it is quite, uh, quite fun, at least given yourself that sense of adventure uh, and, and simulating coming to these places, that, that at least is something. And in terms of seeing glaciers, this is certainly one of the best places to come. So the National Park up here is the largest national park in Argentina, covering some 2,800 square miles. The park is located in the far southwest of Argentina in Santa Cruz province and it has the largest ice cap in the world outside of Antarctica, Iceland and Greenland. And the ice cap feeds a total of 47 large glaciers uh, across the park and all of those glaciers uh, feed into uh, the Pacific, which obviously isn't really very far away from here, it's just, just to the, uh, the west of where we are now. The National Park is made up of two parts, so one part is slightly further north from where we are just now, and it's alongside Lake Viedma. But today we are visiting the southern part of the park alongside Lake Argentino and uh, we'll be flying the 60 odd mile length of Lake Ar Argentina very shortly uh, when we turn east and head towards El Caliphate. The Lake Argentino part of the park contains the biggest glaciers which are named uh, Perito Moreno, Uppsala and Spaghettini. And as you might imagine, the area is very popular with tourists who love climbing and trekking. And uh, El Caliphate is, I gather, the place to go if a holiday like that appeals. This is a very fragile environment though. So uh, it can't take tourism without cost. I think there are a few inevitable ecological, environmental, sustainability type issues with the extent to which this is becoming a, a popular place to go uh, for, uh, for glacier trekkers. We're going to have to start turning towards the east now and uh, head over towards El Caliphate. As I said, it's about 60 miles from here, so I'm actually going to go back into time lapse and just speed up the flight again in a few moments' time. I think that glacier just up there is the Uppsala Glacier. So I tried to get a sense of the map uh, just before we started our descent, so I could try and spot what we'd be looking at. And there was a massive glacier just to the northern bit uh, of the park that we're looking at, uh, of the bit of the park that we're looking at. So I think that's probably the Uppsala one, that's one of the largest ones in Argentina. You can probably see from a flying perspective that we are uh, getting thrown around a little bit as we're going over these mountains, I guess that's to be expected. There's going to be a lot of cold air currents this kind of area. Look at that, that is absolutely fabulous scenery. I know I've said this before, but with MSFS 2020 you can sometimes forget that you're in a simulated environment. That is absolutely spectacular down there. So I sort of planned out this route visually, very, very much hoping that the weather would allow me to see where I was going and obviously we've been really lucky uh, 
because uh, it is very clear. I always prefer to fly in true to life weather. Otherwise, a whole lot, a whole chunk of the challenge which I relish about flying on flight sim is taken away. So, yeah, I take the risk on the weather, and that risk today has paid off with some fantastic scenery. What we're going to do is uh, head over there. You can see where the lake is, Argentino. Just following this body of water down here, round the corner into the lake. And in essence, I'm going to be flying a massive downwind leg all the way to El Caliphate. Nothing too scientific about this approach. Obviously it's a very quiet area in terms of uh, aviation traffic. There's nothing anywhere close to me uh, on VATSIM right now. That comes as no surprise whatsoever. So uh, yeah, I'm just going to pretty much hold this heading for the next 60 odd miles and then turn onto a base leg and land. I appreciate there's a lot of cockpit furniture in the way of the scenery we have just seen. Though. So what I'm going to do once we get uh, to El Caliphate is get the drone out and I'll come back over this way and take some more shots of, uh, of the glaciers. That beautiful sunlight shining off the water down there is stunning. Okay, so we're now leaving the park behind us, so it's time to time-lapse the flight for just another minute or so and then we will be landing into our caliphate, our next stop on the TBM 930 World Tour. Okay, so let's turn on to final and uh, land here at El Caliphate. The airport is located some way to the east of the glaciers that we've just seen. Clearly, you couldn't really build an airport in the terrain over there, so out here it's much flatter and uh, suitable for, uh, for building a runway. And in fact, the runway here looks to be pretty big. But even though this is quite a long way from the National Park, this is, by all accounts, the airport you would fly to if you were coming down to explore this part of Argentina. So we've got a flying visit in of the glaciers, but it looked so spectacular. What I'm going to do is uh, get the drone out and go and have another look once we've parked up and turned the plane off. Otherwise, it's going to be a relatively short stop here in El Caliphate before we head up to Santiago. 500. So far, so good on the final approach here. Very happy with this. 
Nice calm weather, great visibility obviously. I think there is ILS available on this runway, but I haven't tuned it in. Given the weather, I can just do a visual. the usual inching towards the runway, constantly checking between the primary flight display and the runway. Just minor corrections as I go. Obviously in a plane this size even minor corrections look like slightly bigger corrections but overall this is fairly smooth. the threshold and there we are. Not too bad. So let's just taxi in. It looks like the uh, well the gates and the parking area just over to the left hand side. Obviously it's not a big airport this, so I think we can just head over here and find somewhere among the other GA aircraft. A little bit slow to vacate here. Doesn't really matter insofar as there aren't any other aircraft chomping at the bit to either take off or land. Cessna and a couple of other turboprops here, so we can just park up alongside those, I think. Let's just do a U turn here. So in a few moments time we're going to go and check out the glasses again with the drone. If you want to jump ahead, do check out the chapters I've listed below. You can jump ahead to the uh, time-lapse cruise up to Santiago or the arrival into Santiago if you wish. But otherwise, uh, let's go and see those glasses in a little bit more detail once again.
OK, so just a quick stop here in El Caliphate before we continue our journey. I say a quick stop, but you may have noticed outside that the weather has deteriorated substantially. That's because I'm actually doing this on a different day. And today's live weather, uh, according to Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, suggests that it's a lot cloudier uh, today here in Argentina. But we've seen the scenery, we've seen the best bits that we wanted to see, so that doesn't worry us too much. So just a short taxi out to runway 25 and then we will be doubling back on ourselves to pick up our flight route heading pretty much directly to the north. You can see that pink line on the navigation display on the center left screen and we will then uh, follow that course up to Santiago. I'm going to backtrack here. I did think about just turning left straight onto the runway and going from there but I think it's probably safest to backtrack. We have got quite a heavy fuel load today because of the length of the flight. As I mentioned earlier on, it's likely to be about three and a half to four hours up to Santiago. Also, I'm not that familiar with Santiago. I've flown there a couple of times on a flight sim in an airliner to the main international airport, but I know that the, the, the uh, terrain around Santiago is very challenging, so I need to give myself plenty of uh, fuel just in case I need to do a go around. So let's line ourselves up. I'm taking this a little bit too fast here. Yeah, I could have taken that a bit more carefully, couldn't I? Okay, so we're nicely lined up. Uh, let's get the landing lights and the strobes on. And away we go. As always, just taking care of the throttle not to over torque the engine. And as usual, we're looking for a rotate speed of 90 knots. Williams, that's just that extra weight, but there we are, off we go. And gear up. What we're going to be doing is uh, very similar to what we did on the way down in the last episode. If you watched the last episode, we flew from Buenos Aires to the Falkland Islands and then down to, to Puerto Williams near Cape Horn. Um, that now we've flown up to El Caliphate, which is on a kind of similar latitude to the Falkland Islands, and then we're going up to Santiago, which is a similar latitude to Buenos Aires. So we're kind of repeating the distances uh, up the west coast of South America as we did up the east coast. But enough talking from me for the time being. It's time to time-lapse the cruise over the next few hours up to Santiago. I will speak to you very shortly um, once we are in the capital city of Chile.
welcome back to the flight and I'll have to wait and see how the time lapse turns out on that cruise se uh, segment but without a doubt that was one of the most turbulent flights I've ever had and it's certainly the most turbulent flight I've had in the TBM 930 since I got Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. Um, that was really really bumpy. We've obviously uh, had a long journey over some very challenging terrain a lot of it quite mountainous uh, I mean you can see here what the terrain is like around Santiago that's our airfield just down there by the way to see it uh, at our one o'clock but yeah that uh, that whole flight would have been a bit of a vomit comet journey I think so uh, we're, we're here we've arrived in Santiago we're in the capital of Chile we are over to the west, sorry, to the east of the city. Just get my bearings right. Yes, to the east of the city. The uh, international airport is over on the west of the city. So uh, we're clear of any traffic going to the international airport. What I'm just doing is a quick circuit here. Just getting the, uh, the lie of the land. Clearly I need to be extremely careful given the terrain. But I've just got a sense of the airport. I'm just going to do a quick... Uh, circuit here so I mean this is going to be short this is going to be short I'm going to turn on to my downwind very very shortly yeah, just getting a sense of just also trying to see what the train is like close to the airport it looks fairly flat once I've got clear of these mountains but um, as is so often the case on the TMM 930 World Tour I'm flying this for the first time I've not been to this airport before if you've watched some of my airliner flights some of my flights in feature lengths where I'm flying an airline into Heathrow I've done that dozens and dozens of times before but I've never flown into this airfield before this is this is all new so I've already got myself onto downwind and it feels like we're quite low. It feels like this this bit of the, the land beneath us is quite elevated, I think. Yeah, in fact I can see that on the train map. It is higher up than where the airport itself is, so just need to be quite careful. I'll do a short downwind leg relatively speaking I think and then uh, then turn on to base and finals. So if you're interested, this is the Aerodromo Eulogio Sanchez Erasurus. I have apologised before for my poor linguistics um, <laughs> when it comes to these names, but that is where we're landing. It's in a part of Santiago called La Reina. Let's just turn on to base now. I don't know if this airport handles executive traffic or just of GA or it might even be a military airbase as, as I said a little while ago but this looks ideal for the TBM 930 World Tour. I like to avoid big international airports wherever Landing possible. Gear. Landing gear. I've done a lot of virtual flying into big international airports going into something like this with no ILS, just doing a straight visual approach here. That's what we want. So I'm pretty happy with this approach. It's looking alright at the moment. Now that I've got clear of that uh, mountainous terrain. Landing on runway 01. We're facing uh, north, well, slightly northeast, mostly north. down here at my primary flight display I can actually see we're now very slightly downwind as in the wind is behind us but uh, we'll just have to look at that and there we go 
Yeah, when I was overflying the airport uh, just a short while ago, it was quite a quite a decent headwind, uh, which which I was expecting to uh, fly into into runway zero one, but it's actually turned out to be a tiny tailwind just at the very end there. Not quite sure why that would be the case. Well, this looks like a pretty crowded apron. I don't quite know where I'm going to park here. Might need to weave in and out the traffic. Let's turn off the, uh, the landing lights, stick on the taxis, turn off the pulse, turn off the strobes, bring in the flaps. I don't really have many complaints about Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 at all. I think it's absolutely fantastic. But my goodness me, that there, there are a lot of vehicles here. Fire trucks, an awful lot of GA. Oh my goodness, we've got a van reversing. Okay, let's, uh, we're just going to divert around here. I mean, you'd kind of think that these vehicles should be making way for the aircraft, but there we are. So let's just park the plane up over here and uh, we'll shut down and call it a day. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the TBM 930 World Tour, taking us from the bottom of South America up to Santiago. From here, I haven't actually decided where we're going to go next, uh, but we're continuing north up the west coast of South America, incrementally heading up towards Central America and then back into North America uh, by degrees. So please look out for the next episode. If you hit the subscribe button and uh, click on that bell, you'll hear when I next get uh, to put an episode up. And of course, look out in the meantime for more short and long haul flying uh, on both Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 and Prepare 3D here on the Airborne Noir YouTube channel. Many thanks for watching and speak to you again soon.